When this evil neighbor kept expanding his yard, his neighbors couldn't help but watch. He couldn't do anything but wait to see what consequences would come his way. Little did the neighbor know what an expensive lesson was coming his way. Miles felt his face grow hot and red in rage as his neighbor Gregory screamed at him. Who the hell do you think you are questioning me and my property? I have been living here for over 10 years while you just moved in. Why don't you learn to mind your own business? Try as he might, he couldn't find the words to respond. Instead, he did just what was requested. He would mind his own business. Returning to his home, he could hardly believe the encounter he had just experienced. As a retired park ranger, he knew the implications of what his neighbor was doing. But did he? What did Gregory really think was going to happen? How was he supposed to handle this? He really didn't think he was going to face conflict like this and in a retirement village of all places. Miles had just moved into the retirement village just as his wonderful neighbor had so aptly pointed out, and he was loving every moment of it. He had served as a park ranger his whole life across the country, but had decided to settle this side to be closer to his family. As much as he loved his new home, he couldn't help but notice some irregular things happening next door. He tried to remind himself that it wasn't his problem, but the more he looked at the issue, the more he felt he had to say something. His evil neighbor was up to no good, and something had to be done about it. Miles had been intrigued at the neighbor's garden ever since he first moved in. It was far larger than his, extending a good few feet beyond the boundary of his into the park that bordered their fences. Since he was new to the complex, he didn't quite know whether the yards were standard or not. So, he took the time to wander around and meet his neighbors, all the while very observant of what their gardens looked like. Sure enough, it didn't take long for him to confirm that his neighbor Gregory had indeed a very uniquely sized garden. In it, he housed some beautiful vintage cars that Miles found himself quite envious of. When taking a closer look, he realized that Gregory had paved his garden for this very purpose. Again, assuming that somehow Gregory had arranged a garden this size after obtaining every permit from City Hall, he never expected anything illegal. That is, until he woke suddenly one morning to some loud construction noise outside. It was here that all the issues and conflict began. Peering sleepily out of his window, he saw to his utter surprise that his neighbor had a helper in his yard, and they had pulled out the fencing posts from the park's fence. What they did next made him wake up sharply. Once the posts from the fence were out, they began to cut the fence and roll it up. Then, they took a couple of steps further into the park, placed the posts awkwardly into the ground, and rerun the fencing, making it look like nothing had been changed. Except for the massive and growing discrepancy between Miles' yard boundary and Gregory's. Then, before anyone could suspect anything had changed, Gregory and his helper quickly put down more paving to make it look like it was all the same. Miles was shocked. He wasn't sure what the complex rules were regarding making changes to the properties, but he was damn sure about the park rules. He had enforced them for long enough. There was no way what Gregory was doing was legal. At first, he hoped that if he spoke to his neighbor, maybe he would have a valid explanation, but he highly doubted it. To make matters worse, Gregory just seemed to fill up the new space with even more expensive vehicles. Miles couldn't help but laugh, wondering how Gregory didn't think anyone would notice. Miles tried asking the other, more intimate neighbors as to whether they had noticed or said anything to Gregory before, but with each request, he was met with a sullen face and a quick, I don't know, I can't help you here, before they closed the door or changed the topic of conversation. This whole situation just stank, and it started to keep him up at night. He tossed and turned, thinking about how if he was still a ranger, he would most definitely say something. So, why would it be any different this time around? He eventually came to the conclusion that he had to confront Gregory and see what he had to say. It was a sunny afternoon when Miles approached Gregory, who was tinkering with an old car in his expansive yard. The air was thick with the smell of motor oil and fresh paint. Gregory looked up, wiping his hands on a rag, his expression guarded. Hey Gregory, Miles started casually. I couldn't help but notice you're expanding your yard quite a bit. Did you know that's part of the protected reserve? Gregory's eyes narrowed, his demeanor shifting from wary to hostile in an instant. What's it to you, newcomer? He spat, his voice dripping with disdain. I've lived here for over ten years. I know what I'm doing. You just moved in. Mind your own business. Miles held up his hands in a placating gesture. 
I was just asking. No need to get defensive. Gregory stepped closer, his face flushed with anger. Defensive? You don't know the first thing about this place or me. Stay out of my affairs, or you'll regret it. The vehemence in Gregory's words took Miles by surprise. He realized this was more than a minor dispute. Gregory felt threatened and was lashing out. Miles nodded slowly, backing away. All right, I'll mind my own business, he said, though his mind was already racing with thoughts of what to do next. It all started to make sense. No wonder everyone else didn't want to engage with Miles on the topic. They had probably also inquired just as he had, except they felt scared or intimidated by his reaction. Miles wasn't intimidated, though. He just wondered whether picking a fight with his neighbor was worth the effort. Back in the safety of his home, he mulled over his options. Reporting Gregory to the authorities seemed the logical step, but he worried about the potential fallout. Gregory was volatile, and Miles didn't want to escalate the situation unnecessarily. Besides, the authorities might take their time investigating, leaving Miles to deal with an even angrier neighbor in the meantime. Still, the idea of doing nothing gnawed at him. Gregory's actions were illegal, and the protected reserve was a crucial habitat for local wildlife. The right thing to do was clear, even if the path wasn't. After much thought, he realized that the rangers would probably do a perimeter check in the summer. Perhaps during the previous checks, it hadn't been so apparent that the boundary had been illegally shifted, but now Gregory had taken it too far. It would be completely obvious to any ranger checking it out. They would fine him, and most importantly, spare Miles the trouble of confronting him. Miles really didn't think his neighbor was brazen enough to expand further, but he was soon proved very wrong. It wasn't long before Gregory and his helper were back at it again. Days turned into weeks, and weeks into months, and Gregory continued his illegal expansion, oblivious to the silent watch kept by Miles. The ex-ranger noted every detail in a small notebook, dates, times, descriptions of the vehicles being housed in the expanded yard. It wasn't the first time he had to do something like this. In the past, he had the unfortunate pleasure of having to do surveillance on someone similar to Gregory while he was working. Gregory wasn't ignorant to Miles poking around his business, though. It became more and more apparent to him that his neighbor was not going to just let him get away with his illegal behavior like the others had. He smelled trouble, so he decided to try and intimidate Miles to mind his own business. The new neighbor didn't seem to care too much, though. So, with each act of intimidation received with a simple shrug, Gregory grew bolder and bolder. One morning, Miles found his car splashed with dirty water. Another day, his trash was strewn across the front porch. Miles kept his cool, refusing to react. He knew retaliation would only play into Gregory's hands. He knew that it was all just a waiting game. If the Rangers didn't notice anything or do anything in the summer, he would have to re-decide how to approach it all. But until then, he was banking on the authorities to do their job with due process. That way, Gregory wouldn't be able to fight with him and ruin his sanctuary of retirement. Thankfully, soon winter arrived, and with it, a reprieve. Gregory left for his seasonal home, leaving the neighborhood in an eerie quiet. Miles enjoyed the peace, knowing it was temporary. He used the time to review his notes, ensuring everything was in order should he need to present it to the authorities. The winter season was a marvel to behold in his new home. From his front porch, he was able to spot all the winter-thriving animals forage for their favorite snacks. The blanket of white snow was so calming to behold. The trees stood like giants in the sky while glistening with their new white coats. Miles felt so affirmed in his choice to live there. He needed to be surrounded by nature at all times. That was half the reason why he struggled to understand someone who would so blatantly disregard the very nature he bordered on. Luckily, Gregory's karma was about to be returned. Slowly but surely, the world around Miles began to awaken from its icy slumber. The snow began to melt, and the shoots of green and spots of color began to emerge from beneath the white blanket. It was with this change that Miles began to grow excited. Soon, summer would be approaching, and it would finally be the time he had been waiting for all along. As it began to warm up, more and more activity began to come past his fence. People on hikes, deer foraging for delicious food. All of it was entertaining for Miles, but nothing made him happier than the morning he woke to commotion outside his house. Peering through the window, he saw park authorities inspecting the extended fence. They moved with purpose, measuring and taking notes. Miles stepped outside, drawn by curiosity. 
As he approached, one of the officers spotted him and called over. Good morning, sir. Do you live here? The officer asked. Miles nodded. Yeah, I moved in a few months ago. Is everything all right? The officer explained that they had received an anonymous tip about the encroachment into the reserve and were investigating. Miles' heart quickened. This was the moment he had been waiting for. He didn't expect someone to report it, but either way, he had ended up in the same position. They were then doing what he hoped they would do all along. The authorities came over to Miles' section of yard and asked him if they could just pass a few questions by him. Of course, he obliged happily, but he resolved to answer only the questions asked, letting the officers lead the conversation. He didn't want to be accused of offering unsolicited information, especially considering how Gregory had told him to mind his own business. They inquired about Gregory's activities and Miles provided concise, factual answers. He shared his detailed notes, which the officers received with appreciation. This is very thorough, one of them remarked, flipping through the pages. Thank you for your cooperation. Miles watched as they approached Gregory's front door, posting a large, conspicuous notice. The bold letters spelled out a 21-day notice to restore the yard and appear in court. Gregory was also slapped with a hefty fine of $11,000, which would increase for every day he was over the 21-day notice. The authorities were clearly not taking this lightly. Myers looked at the notice with a big grin. This was it. This was the karma that Gregory so clearly deserved. The whole time, he had thought he was just going to get away with breaking the law and destroying nature at his own discretion. It was about time that he was taught otherwise. But much to Miles' surprise, Gregory actually made it worse on himself. The 21 days notice came and went, and Gregory still wasn't home. The authorities came past to see why he hadn't paid his fine or responded and found his home empty. So, they issued a notice of confiscation of all the vehicles in his yard so that they themselves could return the property to its original dimensions. He was given three days to respond to that, but again, he didn't respond. And so the authorities returned once again, only this time with tow trucks to take his vehicles away. Miles watched on in awe of the law doing its thing. He couldn't help but wonder how Gregory was going to react to all of this. The loading of all its vehicles took some time and made quite a commotion. Of course, this brought everyone else's attention to what was happening. Everyone looked on in silence. Not one person objected to what was happening, which was a testament to the way Gregory had treated everyone around him. When Gregory returned from his winter getaway, the multiple notices on his door were the first thing he saw. Panic and rage contorted his features as he read the official documents. Miles watched him carefully go inside. He waited to see how long it would take for him to check his backyard. In less than five minutes, Gregory was screaming in fury at his small, torn-up yard. The authorities had ripped up all the paving and returned the fencing back to its original boundary. Of course, this had left behind a royal mess, but the disheveled yard was nothing compared to the lack of cars. Absolutely dumbstruck by what he was witnessing, he whipped around to Miles' yard and came storming up his back porch, where Miles sat calmly. Smiling and unsurprised by the fury on Gregory's face, he addressed him. What do you want? He asked calmly. You! You did this! Gregory shouted, waving the notice. You reported me! Tell them they're wrong, that I didn't know what I was doing! Miles met his gaze steadily. I didn't report you, Gregory. They found out on their own. And you did know what you were doing. Remember? You told me so. This is ridiculous! I was out of town. I can't be liable for missing a notice like this. Wait, were you here all winter? Why didn't you call me and let me know what was happening? You could have prevented me from losing everything. Miles now smiled. Gregory, I clearly recall you telling me to mind my own business, so that's just what I did. What seems to be the problem now? Gregory's face turned a deep shade of red. He opened his mouth to retort, but then closed it, realizing the futility. Without another word, he turned and stomped back to his house. While Miles looked on, he couldn't help but feel so satisfied. He had made the right choice, and it felt so good to just let the law take its place in the whole scenario. Over the next few weeks, Gregory's demeanor changed. The bravado and hostility were replaced with a sullen resignation. The authorities had replaced the once unsteady, old rickety poles with new aluminum ones, and they were securely cemented into the ground. 
In addition to this, they placed a surveillance camera in the nearby tree to span the boundaries of the fences. That way, they could keep a close eye on the residents of the village and prevent them from doing the same. Gregory was forced to attend his court date and pay the heavily accumulated fine that he was charged with. However, he wasn't able to get back all the confiscated cars. The loss destroyed him, but he clearly needed the humbling because he grew quiet and far more respectful to his neighbors. Miles watched the transformation with a sense of quiet satisfaction. Justice had been served, not through confrontation, but through patience and persistence. The reserve was safe, and Gregory's reign of intimidation was finally over. As spring blossomed, Miles took long walks through the reserve, enjoying the renewed beauty of the natural landscape. He often reflected on the events of the past year, grateful for the peace that had finally settled over the village. His experience with Gregory had reaffirmed his belief in doing what was right, even when it was difficult. The principles that had guided him through his military career were just as relevant in civilian life. Integrity, patience, and a commitment to justice. What a great story. How would you have handled this? Would you have been as patient as Miles? Do you think what Gregory did was wrong? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Till next time.